What's up YouTube? Jeff back again today with a very exciting Samsung video for you guys. And today we're doing the first things to do with One UI 7.0. Tons of you guys will be getting the update all throughout the week. Of course, the US is scheduled to receive it on April 10th. Some people in Korea already received the update on the S24 series. Z Fold 6, the Z Flip 6. I already got the update on my Z Fold Special Edition. So it is rolling out. I know some of you are frustrated if it hasn't reached you yet, but I'm going to give you guys my top 10 things you should do once you get this new update. There's a lot to explore. I'll give you guys some ideas in this video. Before we get started, I want to introduce you guys to the sponsor of today's video, which is Whitebridge AI. Whitebridge AI is a powerful tool designed to give you deep insights into the digital footprint of anyone you're considering for hire or for collaboration in any business or personal venture. Now, basically what it does is it allows you to type in the name, email or LinkedIn URL of whoever you want in here. For instance, you could type in my name, for instance, and it will give you everything that the internet knows about that particular person. If you're a CEO or HR professional looking to hire talent or build relationships, or just a person that makes wants to make a connection with someone online, it can be a fantastic tool to gather data from over 30 trusted sources. It scans multiple online platforms in real time, and it provides a complete picture of their digital reputation. Now, it'll find all these different social things and aggregate them. You can get a 25% discount by using my code SAMIGURU. You see there's a whole bunch of Jeff Springers out there. Scroll down until you find the one you want, and there is my profile right there. I did run a report on myself using the Whitebridge AI platform, and I wanted to share you guys some of the things that they found that would be very helpful if you were interested in connecting with me. They have listed here my personality traits, tech savvy innovator, family oriented, which is true, sports enthusiast, very true, leadership skills, experience in managing diverse teams. I'm a CEO of my company for Sammy Guru, continuous improvement advocate, continual improvement initiatives in both professional and personal life. Cutting edge technology is my preference, travel enthusiasts, sports gear, family activities, professional development. All of these things are true. So if you were looking forward to trying to make a connection with me in a business or personal relationship capacity, all of these things from Whitebridge AI's report could be very helpful in doing that. So they do a great job of curating all this information, delivering it to you again. You can receive a 25% discount if this is a tool that would help you connect with a new partnership in your business or personal life. 25% off using the code SAMIGURU. Check it out below in the pinned comment and description. We do thank Whitebridge AI for sponsoring this video. As usual, I have a little Google Keep document here that I can keep handy to go through my list. The very first thing on my list is to switch to the vertical app drawer. So those of you who followed me for a long time know that I love the vertical app drawer capability that used to be available inside of the home up module of Goodlock. Well, Samsung has brought that to One UI 7 natively, but depending on where you are and which device you have, it may not be set right out of the box when you install One UI 7. So to do that, you go ahead and go into your app drawer, top three dots, go to sort, alphabetical, and then it will automatically give you the vertically scrolling app drawer. However, if you do want to do custom order, it will keep the side to side horizontal scroll, which sorts by your install time. I'm not a huge fan of that personally. And also the vertical scroll is just so much easier to use in my personal opinion. Either way, you do get the advanced search functionality built into One UI 7, global search, which has gotten much better thanks to Galaxy AI and uh, all that is built in. So that's my first suggestion is go in there and take care of the vertical app drawer. The next thing on my list is to enable notification categories. I've talked about this in many videos in the past, but Samsung has disabled this option for a lot of people, even if they had it enabled in One UI 6.1.1. Once you install the One UI 7 update, this appears to be turned off again for numerous people. So to make sure you have the ability to set your own custom notification sounds and manage your notification categories individually, go to notifications, advanced settings, scroll down where it says manage notification categories for each app, make sure this is turned on. For some of you, it may be turned off again when you install One UI 7. Now, if you go back, once you do this, you'll be able to go into the apps and then scroll down and find any application you're interested in, and you'll be able to change the notifications. So for instance, like a social app like Facebook, you'll be able to find all of your different notification categories right here, and you can set different permissions, different sounds for each of these. So you can go into comments, you can choose the sound that you want, either the app provided sound or a custom sound. So make sure that is in fact turned on the manage notification categories after you install One UI 7, even if you had it on 
in One UI 6.1.1. One of the most interesting features in One UI 7 is the new Now Bar. Go into your settings and scroll down to Lock Screen and AOD. Once you do that, you'll see Now Bar right here, and then go to the various live notifications and choose all the ones you're interested in. Now I've turned on all of the ones that I have available, but I would say some of the most important ones, if you're not gonna turn on anything else, are sports from Google, if you like sports, media player to get live notifications for your media, maps for live notifications for Google Maps, the clock if you wanna get them for timers and things like that, and then also the voice recorder if you want like to be able to play, pause, your voice recordings and things like that. Now more functionality will be coming to live notifications and the now bar over time, but setting these up will make sure that you get all of this information. Now, just to show you how this works, unfortunately, I don't think I have any sports teams of mine that are playing right now, but if you're listening to music, let me just play a song. I don't really wanna get copyrighted here, but if we go back, you see the live notification chip right up there, which you'll be able to tap and get your media player. And then also on the lock screen down here, you'll have the play and pause with your live notification media chip. Now, if you have always on display, the now bar will also display there as well. So make sure you turn that on or off as per your preferences, and then you can use the now bar on the AOD as well. The new quick settings tiles and setup between notifications and quick settings is something that you're gonna wanna spend some time with. By default, One UI 7 does have the quick settings and the notifications separated out, as you guys can see there. However, if you're interested, you can go in and edit and combine these. If you go to panel settings, you can put these back together and you can also turn the quick panel to be on the left and the notifications on the right. Now, I personally like the separated version that they have for the stock One UI 7 settings, so I haven't messed with this, but this is something that you can change if you're interested. You also have unlimited customizability. You can move you know, your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth down. You can move your brightness up. You know, if you want to have your media player, because the media player does live here inside of the quick settings, you can move that above your brightness. You can move your smart things like your Samsung TV remote up or down, wherever you want to have things. And in addition to that, you now have this quick panel grid, which you can edit, and you can actually make this as large as you really want. You can see how you can just keep adding more and more stuff to this. You can basically make this as large as you like by adding more and more quick toggles. And once you do that here, you can just expand this. Now, it does turn, tend to look a little weird if you have it really, really, really long because then something like your media player is gonna run off the screen. But if you like that, you can certainly do it. I don't necessarily recommend it, but it is certainly a thing that you can do. So make sure you take some time to set this up and also decide if you want to combine those panels again. I'm gonna put this back just because I don't think I can deal with it being that far down. But make sure you set this up the way you like it. And if you wanna combine quick settings and notifications again, to get it back like it was on One UI 6.1.1. That's certainly something that you can do if it bothers you. Up next on my list, try the supersized folders. We have the new large folders in One UI 7, and they really are amazing. These large folders, so if you go in here, you'll see how I have mine set up. The large folders basically allow you to tap any icon in here and go directly into the application. Like you don't even have to open the folder. You see how I just tap the Play Store icon and I'm all set. Now, the way you set this up is, when you long press on a folder, you'll be able to either shrink it or expand it. So you see if I shrink this one down, I can long press, I'll get the enlarge option. So I highly recommend setting some of these up. If you have a lot of apps that you quick launch a lot that you wanna get right into without having to tap here to open up the folder, then you will enjoy this feature. There's eight total applications that can be shown for quick launching from the folder without opening. And then of course, if you have more, the rest of those will appear once you expand it. For the new drag device to connect, you just go ahead and drag the thing that you're interested in connecting, like for instance, my Tab S10 Ultra, multi-control will start. You can also set up here your various other features that you're interested in, like auto hotspot connection, call on other devices, text on other devices, etc. So this is how you use the new drag to connect feature inside One UI 7. If you go into the settings here, you can also choose the Samsung account, permissions, etc. that you have for nearby devices. So make sure, of course, that you set this up on each device that you wanna use with the new nearby device feature. Gemini is the default assistant on One UI 7. So if you long press your power button, you're going to get Gemini. And Gemini has a couple of new tricks with One UI 7. One of those is sharing your screen. Now, eventually you'll be able to share just a single app, but right now all you can do is share your screen. And what you can do is you can go in here and say, hey Gemini, tell me about this X profile. Okay, I see Jeff Springer's X profile. 
He's a Samsung community and YouTube creator with a pretty big following, and he's based in Peoria, Arizona. Is there anything specific you'd like to know about him or his work? So it's very cool. You can do this. You can also share your camera. So if you go into Gemini, this is just rolled out a couple of days ago, so I figured I'd mention it in this One UI 7 video. If you go into Gemini Live, you can also now share your camera and you can get information about things that are in your general area. So you can say something like this. Can you tell me something about this case, Gemini? That's a vibrant red phone case. It looks like it might be for a OnePlus phone, judging by the logo. Are you looking for information on the model? So it misjudged because that's our Inspira Casas logo, but it's also a little blurry here, trying to do it behind the camera. But it's very cool. You can point it at anything that's in your environment. I'm gonna make a full standalone video on this so you guys can see how to use it. But these features inside Gemini, in addition to all of that great functionality with Gemini Live, you also have tons of Samsung apps that are now integrated directly with your Galaxy smartphone and Gemini. You have Samsung Notes, you have Samsung Reminders, in addition to all these other things that you're seeing on the screen. Now you can see up here at the top, they do have some specific information about Samsung apps that are integrated right here. You can see up here, you can look through all the ones that you have integrated, but all those Samsung apps on the Galaxy phone are integrated by default, including calendar, et cetera. So you'll be able to get all of your great Galaxy information with the smarts of Gemini as well. Inside the new camera application in One UI 7, you've got a brand new set of controls here, which allows you to do things with a one-handed sort of flow a little bit easier. If you go into your settings, there's also some new options depending on the device model that you have. So if you go into things like advanced picture options and then also scroll down to advanced video options, you'll see that you may have the new log video mode depending on if you have one of the newer S-Line or foldable phones, you'll be able to shoot in log. This is a great feature and it's something that Samsung added with One UI 7. You've also got some additional options inside the composition guide and of course, inside of the editor for videos and things like that, you have audio eraser, which you'll be able to utilize on your Galaxy smartphone directly from the gallery. So Samsung has added quite a few things. There's also a few new options inside camera assistant. If you use this inside GoodLock, there's a lot of different uh, advanced resolution options that you can utilize as well with One UI 7. So make sure that you enable these if your phone supports them. I wanna do kind of a small thing on this because this is model specific, some of these new features, but of course, the new camera layout itself, the one-handed mode, making this easier to utilize with one hand, is not specific to any one model. You can now access all of your modes from this one toggle. Next, there's a lot of options for customizing your home screen, your lock screen, etc. The brand new home screen editor, if you go into settings, you now have the ability to adjust your app size, three different sizes, small, medium, and large. Turn on app labels and widget labels. Of course, you've got your same home screen grid. You can change the app screen grid to five columns, which four is the default. I've changed mine to five, I just prefer that. You can also make your folder grid four by four. That means when you expand it, you'll get a bigger expanded four by four folder, which I think is a really nice thing to get a little more information. Add media player to the page of the home screen. We've had this for a while. Lock home screen layout. Um, this is one that I definitely think you should enable rotate to landscape mode because otherwise it will not rotate to landscape mode in One UI 7 if you don't enable this toggle. So make sure that you do it because the new landscape mode, let me actually turn on auto rotate, that would help. The new landscape mode in One UI 7 is beautiful. The widgets really adapt well and the layout looks great compared to the mess that it was in One UI 6.1.1. So make sure you enable that so that you do use your you know, landscape mode on your home screen. Things look really nice. There's also a lot of great new widgets that you can find for the first party Samsung applications like calendar. You guys saw the one that I had right there. Um, there's some new ones for the clock as well, which all look really, really slick. Of course, we don't have the now brief, unfortunately, on the Galaxy S24 series, which is what I'm using today. That is still an S25 exclusive, but you have some new widgets for health. So just great options, you know, energy score. If you use a Galaxy Ring, things like that. Samsung has added a lot of great new widgets that aren't just related to the Now Brief, although Now Brief has kind of been a big, you know, selling feature in the marketing materials for One UI. It is still an S25 feature. But you should definitely play around with these new home screen settings, make sure you get things the way you want, and turn on that auto rotate in landscape so your home screen looks really nice. Finally, there are a couple of good lock modules that are can't miss 
after you install One UI 7, I'm gonna highlight those in my opinion. The first one is Home Up. There's got a couple of updates right there which I need to do. Home Up, which allows you to completely tune your gestures. I've made a full video on this, so I'll link it below. But with the new gesture tuning, you can go in here and turn this on and you'll be able to tune your gestures to your preferences using one of the preset options or the advanced tuning option, which we put a full guide together on. So if you ever had any issues with lag or you found like the gestures weren't snappy enough, you can now fix all those issues yourself inside of the brand new home up. Now it's not only this that comes in the new home up, you've also got a bunch of other cool options like the new DIY. You can turn vibrations on or off. Home up's been completely revamped. And of course, you can also change your task changer, which my favorite is the grid task changer, just as you were able to do in the past. So home up has some of the same features, but a lot of new stuff that you should check out. Home up is also now built into the home screen settings. If you go to settings, after enabling home up, go to more customizations. This will relaunch the home up application. So it's actually built into stock one UI once you install the application. Another good lock app that is now built into stock one UI after you install it is Lockstar. Now Lockstar has been revamped for one UI seven where you can not only edit it from here, but if you go to the home or so you go to the lock screen and you long press, you'll be able to go right in here and all of your lock screen messages and stuff from Lockstar will be editable. So you can see here, you can tap on here and see all the various Lockstar options and you can also edit your always on display. So I did a full video on this as well. If you wanna see more details about what each of these do and there's a lot you can do with the new Lockstar, I'll drop that below. Now, if you wanna edit your clock inside of Lockstar, you can get additional clock options using clock face. So make sure you update this as well. Once you update this and launch it, all those new clock face options will be available not only here, but once again, if we go back to the lock screen and you scroll over when you go to the clock, tap on the clock, scroll over to style, you'll notice over here, you can launch clock face directly from the lock screen. So a lot of the theme of good lock in One UI 7 is that once you enable these modules, they're built into One UI 7 so that when you long press on the lock screen to edit it, all your good lock functionality is there. When you go into home screen settings, you know, all of your home up functionality is right here. You don't have to necessarily ever go into good lock again, which is really nice. Anyway, if you guys wanna check out more on those features, check out those standalone videos, I'll link them below. If you guys have any questions about any of these new features, I'll probably make more videos, I'm sure, spotlighting some other features, advanced functionality of One UI 7. But these are the first 10 things I would do when you first get the update. Appreciate you guys checking out the video. Go to sammyguru.com for more Samsung news, tips, tricks, tutorials, and reviews. Check out the Mystery Box program if you're interested. Appreciate you guys checking out the video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.